Hey, this is Justin, lead nub nuts in charge of tight whips from Minneapolis. You're going down the rabbit hole of JFJ conspiracy with a shop talk is rock. I'm Jim. And I'm Frank. And I'm Jerry. And this is the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast, where the shop talk is rock. All right, Jerry, how are you this week? I'm doing wonderfully, guys. Wonderfully. Right. Jim? Doing good. Doing good. Not that everybody ever asks, but I'm doing good, too. Now. <laughs> I thought about that, Frank, during today. I thought, <laughs> should we ask Frank how he's doing? And I show up, so I'm doing okay. He's you know, retired. Okay. He's doing great. I do good oh, all day long. God bless him. I can't wait to get there. Yeah. Oh, bless I his heart. Highly of recommend. Of course, he has it. Yeah, except <laughs> unless you have a tomato worm issue. I picked five of those bad boys off that plant. It says drop them in so soap sud water, yeah. dish soap water, well, I, or spray. I donate them to my neighbors. It's okay. Oh, so, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Um, sad news off the top, as you know, quiet riot drummer. Uh, yeah. Lost his battle with cancer. With cancer, yeah. God and, bless him. Uh, yeah. Frankie Benali passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had the pleasure of of meeting him one time, uh, straight. Tried not to geek out and be a fanboy, but it was at the whiskey right. upstairs, and um, he was buying drinks for folks and whatnot, and having a it was a little after party thing for a great white show, and uh, he stopped and talked and appreciated the fact that somebody liked his drumming and his music and the whole bit and didn't yeah. have that pretentious rock star attitude that I always thought he had. <laughs> yeah. But I, well, I yeah. spoke to him on the phone one time and uh, the fact that he took the time to talk to me and everything, he was just really great. Yeah. yeah. Just really great. Yeah. And, uh, sad that he had to suffer Love through you, what he went through. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's definitely in a better place now. So yeah. yeah, not in any pain. We also lost Pete Way in between. Yes, we did. That's we right, Army. Yeah. Good point. Little little tougher pill for me to swallow. Oh yeah, yeah. that's your boy. Yeah. yeah, he he was in a, a car accident, correct? An automobile accident. I didn't hear about. Was... I didn't hear what the accident was. I didn't hear anything about a car accident. So that yeah. was um, that was news what? to me when they said he passed away. I knew he had cancer. Right. And they had been battling cancer. And so that's kind of what, what I thought. That's what I thought, it. I mean, well, no, so I, I didn't hear anything about a car. Yeah, yeah well, I, I had read that he a while ago he was in a car accident and never fully recovered. And I guess he yeah. succumbed to those injuries after mm. all that time. So he, oh, he was a true rocker yeah. and, and yeah. lived a hard rock lifestyle, that's for sure. So Rhythm section. Lived a hard rock wave. lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, – it, it's – we were talking about this before. We're at that age, guys, where we're going to start seeing a lot of our uh, musical heroes and whatnot uh, pass on and go to the next next place. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it never gets any easier. It's always. No. No, it doesn't. Because, you, know, you know, our idols are all easily in their 70s. You know. Or late sure. 60s by now. Guys. Yeah. Close, close easily. to it, right? Yeah. 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 And it's, uh, yeah, it's a bitter pill. It sure like, is. Wow. Wow. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, we're not near Jim's fridge this episode. So, we aren't. And uh, just for... Um, I got uh, a cool piece of vinyl sitting in there too, man. Oh, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice and cool by the time we get a chance to see it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, I guess we're going to call this episode 46, even though the last episode was a two-parter, but it wasn't our regular episode. So right. we'll, we'll go with this as episode 46. And so okay. I've got a mail call I want to show, I want to share with you guys uh, a cool. couple of, yeah. couple of things. The first is from a band that we uh, recently um, featured on the band, Sundrug. Oh, nice. Oh, and, yeah, uh, that's right. They got a new, oh, that's right. Jerry well had, uh, pre I think, presented them. and uh, Yes, yes. I think they're from down in Florida. So yes. I got online and picked up this nice, cool single. And, nice seven uh, inch, yeah. Yeah, you know, me and the colored vinyl can't. Yellow vinyl, man. Oh yeah, you'll that. never stop. You'll never stop. No, man. nothing no. wrong with that. No. And uh, you know, a nice little note on the back saying thanks for uh, 
having us on the show. So very cool. Thank you, Sandra. Yep. And, and the other album that I have, and I don't think I'm going to be able to show you the. Oh yes, I am. Here we have Shadow and the Thrill. Oh, our Shadow friend, and the Thrill. Tony Montana. Uh, Anthony. Yep. Yes. And that is a purple splatter that is oh, just nice. spectacular. Oh, that's so, gorgeous. I threw this on the uh, turntable the other day. It sounds better than the CD. You know, I just the vinyl has a nice warm sound to it. So if you get a chance, check out Shadow and the Thrill. And uh, these are limited edition. Pick them up while you can. Yep. So, anyways, that's what we have going on in uh, the mail call. I've got a few other things coming. Um, can't wait to share when they get here. And um, if you if you noticed online on our uh, website, did I think I posted the uh, seven inch um, yellow submarine picture disc that I picked? Yeah, up. isn't that cool? Yeah. Heck uh, yeah, Eleanor Rigby and what? Um, yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was neat, Frank. That yeah. was neat. That was a hundred and eighty yeah. gram seven inch, just I solid. Oh, love it. Now, Jim, I know you play uh, records. You still have a turntable, and you, you I do listen to vinyl. Do you have a vinyl stabilizer on your record? I don't. I guess this is all the rage because um, what? Is, what is? Huh? Well, your, I've, I've never had one. Yeah, I, I just just ordered one on Amazon. There, there's twenty bucks. It actually has a level on it, so you you stick it on the spine of the. Uh, on the spindle, excuse me, spindle. and it puts weight and stabilizes your album so that there's not as much vibration, and it also lets you know if you are level or not. Which could, oh, yeah. you know, if, if you're not sitting level, you need you need to buy five or six more, Frank. To be well, on I'm the just, level with me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have, Sorry. if you have a, um, if you're you know, unlevel playing area on your album you could get some uneasy wear going on there and your and ruin your stylus a lot faster too wow. so um uh, share it when i get it uh, i see a lot of people on the uh, discogs and different places they're, they're all talking about them so I don't wouldn't know. you just leave it out in the sun for like five minutes and put it on the turntable it'd be flat as a pancake Flatten it out again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't think just it works thinking. that way so that oh, might okay. have a candy bowl i don't know you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, laugh too loud. Uh-oh. You go ahead and laugh as much as you want there, Jay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Jeez. And for those of you that... Uh... Oh, that's right. We weren't recording. Sorry. No, we weren't talking about that time. But yeah, so. this is a good time to mention, if you have comments, please do make them. We we accept them all. Good, bad, and ugly. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, the whole like and subscribe and all that business. Uh, mm -hmm. We appreciate all the comments we can get and the feedback. Yep. And I want to let you guys know I got a message from Frank Casada. He received his belt buckle. Oh, good. And uh, he'll be hey! posting the picture soon. Thanks, so, Frank. Yeah. So, all right, let's move forward. We're moving right along. And tonight we have uh, Jerry up first with his band. What do you got for us, Jerry? Uh, we've got a band, a, a duo out of England, the Pearl Hearts, H A R T S. Uh, apparently named after a Canadian outlaw back in the Wild West, Pearl Hart. Um, it's a London, it's a London based two piece and their quote is raised on a steady diet of riff, heavy rock and roll and eighties funk. And it's folks in conspiracy land. This is mind blowing that this is a two piece. We have Kirsty Lowry on lead vocals and guitar originally from Stonehenge right. and Sarah, Sarah Lee Shaw originally from Scarborough on drums, samples and backing vocals, uh, now based in Southeast London. Uh, their first LP was Glitter and Spit, which Frank's going to spin the single from Blackwood. They have a new release called Suck It Up from July of 2020, so it's new. Um, Self-released, they met in 2014. They were in different bands. They just met, met each other on a tour and hooked up. Uh, engineered by Lucas Mendez, produced by Tobin Jones on Double Bang Records. The Pearl Hearts from London. And the songs Frank's gonna spin is Black Blood, and, and they're they're like a blast from the past, folks. L listen to this. This is the Pearl Hearts from London. Here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, 
bites me back. It bites me back. Like the poison rat. Like a poison rat. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. You're still hot at play. You're still hot at play. Oh, this charming act. We'll turn my blood black. Cause right now I'm like honey. Like me, less like me. So can't you fight back? Can't you fight back? Till I'm blue and black, till I'm blue and black. Even a coward can react. So be my damn big lover. That is the Pearl Hearts with Black Blood. Jim, what are your thoughts? Uh, attitude for days. Uh, <laughs> great, uh, great riff. Yeah. And uh, great tone. Uh, unusual song. Um, I liked it. Very uh, kind of a little modern take on a very uh, sort of bluesy style. Mm-hmm. It had that uh, stoner rock vibe to it. Yeah, yeah a little Sabbathy, a little early yeah. rushy. Yeah. But you can picture some uh, smoky club post COVID. Oh yeah. You know? Yes, and, in oh, fact. And beer beer bottles clanking, yeah. people yelling. Oh yeah. I, I bet they are. If they play live, uh, I bet that's a, a good show. Yeah, and it's yep. funny when uh, that you said that because when I was sitting here listening to it, I was just. Trying to imagine what seeing this in a club would be like, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because um, mm-hmm. it's it's got kind of a live, almost live sound to it. Right. Yep. It, it's not a standard song. It's not, uh, you know, verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus. You no, know, it's, it's no. All over the place. It's it's awesome. I, yeah, I like the, and we like got all like, of them, folks. Yeah. Go ahead, Frank. I'm no, sorry. I just say I love the riff. I, I like Jim oh, said. That's- just sucks you yeah in. i knew that riff was right up your alley yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure well i i knew it was if i interject guys when i read their little thing london based two-piece raised on a steady diet of riff heavy mm-hmm. well when you yeah. say the word riff it's frankie over there oh yeah i love it and uh rock and roll and 80s funk and, and it, they're all everywhere the pearlarts.com folks spotify Bandcamp, youtube just the thought of um Kirsty Lowry and Sarah Lee Shaw, just a two piece throwing that sound out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, oh, anyway. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed that. The, the Pearl Hearts. Yeah, the Pearl Hearts, folks. Pearl Hearts. Check yeah. them out. Mm. All right. My well, gosh. M- moving forward, um, I've got kind of a punk band for you punk pop, if you will. Uh, they were formerly known as Apocalypse Meow. 
and um, they broke up. Yeah, I saw up. that. Great name. Yeah. They, they <laughs> yeah. Broke, <laughs> they broke up, I guess, and decided to go do some other things and uh, didn't work out as what they thought it was going to be, so they got back together, slightly rearranged, and they call themselves now Tight Whips. And the band consists of Justin Francis on vocals and guitar, and uh, we saw him at the beginning of the show at the intro. Uh, Jeb Hauser on guitar, Johnny Paradise on bass and vocals, and Chris Zugswert on drums. Hope I got that right, Chris. Um, these guys, this particular um, album came out August 2020. Uh, they've got a total of 14 releases on Bandcamp, a bunch of them are singles. Yeah. But uh, their last one was Down With The Bomb, which came out in 2018. Um, but I just ordered one of their singles. They happen to have it on vinyl. Uh, four bucks. So. Wow. Yeah. Four yeah, bucks for vinyl? Yeah. All, all, the other, all the other singles that they have are sold out. So yeah. I, uh, I snatch up the, the singles whenever I can. Get it while it's hot. Yeah. Absolutely. So yep. anyways, the no song I'm going to play for you is called... Uh, Loose grip on a lion, and uh, here we go. Tight whips. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Big ending. Yes. <laughs> That's a loose grip I on the line. I love that open hi hat. I love the open hi hat. That was a. Love it. That was a formula that seems to work with a lot of pop bands. What did you think, Jim? Uh, I really liked it. Loved the arrangement and uh, that little 
kind of break down before the outro. Um, great drum fill in there. Yeah. Um, interesting lyric. I liked it. Um, it's the kind of thing when you're in the car, you want to just crank it up to 10 and <laughs> jam down the road. Uh, yeah, uh, perfect, uh, perfect example of the genre, I think. There you go. Jerry? I loved it. Open eye hat. I love that. Yeah. Great stuff. And, uh, you know, all, all amps go up to 11. <laughs> and it would sound, I love that. That's good stuff there. The, um, the high D on the guitar. I love that stuff. Yeah, I, I love know. the open hi hat. Great vocals. I don't know. I, I'm almost dialed in on who he reminds me of, but it's, it's, the vocals are really good. Reminded me really a little bit of early offspring, just in the vocals. Not so much the it was just very clear. like guitar tone or anything else. I wouldn't say yeah, that. Yeah, it was good. All right. Tight whips. Well done. Yeah, I really enjoyed the drums on that track. They were, oh, yes. same here. Same yeah. here. Oh, High energy. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're available on Bandcamp. They're on Facebook. Um, and they're very proud to let you know that they were formerly Apocalypse Meow because that's all over the place. They must have really put a lot of uh, uh, effort into that name because they must have trademarked it or something because everything I look up, it, it always says formerly that... Apocalypse Meow. So Really? Yeah, yeah, it makes you wonder if they had like a, a kind of a big following or something, yeah, right? Exactly. So um, like I said, uh, we have to look into that. They, it was recorded and mixed in uh, Minneapolis. Really good. Andy Matheson did a great job with that. Yes. So. All right. Well, that's tight whips. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Jim, what do you have for us? Uh, this week I have a I have an artist by the name of Kirk Adams. Um, Kirk, I, I think he's, he's from Florida, but I'm not sure if he's originally from Florida, but um, – Grew up in a, uh, a family that uh, around his musical siblings, right? Who kind of turned him on to the British Invasion bands. Uh, and then other bands, a little more proggy, like uh, Steely Dan, Bebop Deluxe. Mm. Yeah. Bebop. Uh, college New Wave from uh, late 20th century. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, I was exposed to music a lot early on, became a professional musician as a result. Played all over Florida, uh, spent some time in uh, Scotland, strangely, I think. But uh, I don't, is Scotland like a, I'm not, I don't think of like them as being sort of a hotbed of music. <laughs> the Bay, but, City, Bay City Rollers and the best scotch on the planet. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Oh. Bay City Rollers. Right. Oh, rock and roll love letter to you, man. Yeah. Uh, but spent about six months over there, then came back, started uh, writing and doing his own own thing and recording his own songs. So he's working uh, working on a full length CD. This is the latest single. It's called Here and Now, produced by uh, Andrea Perry. I found this on uh, Bandcamp, but also available Spotify, Amazon, iTunes. Um, I haven't tried to stream it yet on Spotify. <coughs> I'm guessing it's probably there too. So um, this is a. Uh, I think you can find this to be a little bit. A little bit different for me. Mm, yes, it is. So, uh, Jim, changing. Frank, yeah, I, I know. know. Uh, I don't. Well, I'm, uh, must be the hot. I'm buying it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. The hot weather and the fires. He's like living in the middle of three of them. Well, you, you knew I was gonna love your band, Jerry, because it's two gals. Well, oh, okay, bingo! <laughs> and oh, you should see all right these. there. Oh, that's right. And each song is right around your. Uh, your your tolerable limit yes that's great anyway give it a spin frank all right here we go yeah spin it frankie kirk adams kirk here adams now. Did you get my 
love is like a circling moon When it's out of sight, it'll be back soon You can't hold to All right. Wow, I mean, here and now by Kirk Adams. That was um, either Pink Floyd wow. Light or an extra track off a of Magical Mystery Tour. I haven't decided yet. Right? <laughs> or yeah, that, that was uh, yeah. There's a little bit of a psychedelic feel in there. Liked it. Yeah. Wow, that was great, Jim. And and I was thinking, you know, if there were still true radio radio DJs, that would be a great number two song. Oh, you know, heck yeah. Because they could run, make a number two, and come back. <laughs> or, or a number one. If, or a number one if you're playing a sample of the tune. Yes. Good uh, stuff. You know, I'm, you know, I'm usually uh, right like three minutes is kind of my. Right. Yeah. Kind of, kind of my thing. But like, um, I, I don't know. Just something about this track. It's, that was a uh, very it's calming, beautiful. calming it's track. Like, yeah. yeah. Very soothing. Very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Well done. Yeah. I, I'd like to check out some of his other stuff and see yeah. how Kirk it relates Adams. to that. Wow. There you go. Well done, Jim. Well wow. done. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Not me, really. Jim. Kirk. Kirk did a good job. I yes, just, he did. I'm just I'm just the conduit. Just the messenger. <laughs> well, we're all just, you know, we're all just gears in the cog of life. Yeah. There it is. That's all it is. Yeah. Just a spoke wow. in the wheel. There or cogs go. in the gear of life. <laughs> Yeah, spoke in the wheels better. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, moving ahead, we're going to take a trip back to 1974. I know Jim has been waiting for this for <laughs> several weeks. Oh, now. he can't wait. He can't wait. <laughs> Our classic album this week is uh, Queen's Sheer Heart Attack, which came out in 1974, produced by uh, Roy Thomas Baker. RTV. It it's when Kiss, uh, Queen, finally got away from kind of the uh, prog rock that they were doing on those first two albums and um, took a different step into a, a more of a glam rock uh, direction and um, released Killer Queen as a single and uh, Lily of the Valley. Oh, what a beautiful song, yeah. 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 Um, they actually came to the United States and did 77 shows in 1974 through May 1975. And they, on different legs of the tour, they had Sticks, Kansas, Mahogany Rush, and a band called Hustler open up for them on that tour. I had they forgot were headlining. about What's that? They were headlining? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not their I... first trip to the States, though, I'm taking it. No. They probably come before that. I yeah. had forgotten about Frank Moreno's Mahogany oh, Rush. Yeah. I totally forgot about that, Frank. Well done. Easy to do. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Gee, wow, wow. How do you really feel, Jim? He was 70s. Poor Jim. 70s rock personified, you know, early. Yep. That's early that's stuff. me turning up my personality. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yowza. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, anyways. Oh, I love it. I so, swear I love you guys. <laughs> side one consists of Brighton Rock, Killer Queen, Tenement Funster, Flick of the Wrist, Lily of the Valley, and Now I'm Here. Okay. Now All right. Here. At that time, that is when I absolutely fell in love with Roger Taylor's drumming and his vocals. Mm-hmm. He, he had such a strong rock mm. voice. Mm. That was a good, you know, uh, answer to Freddie Mercury. So. I, like when he, I like when he sings. Yeah. I do too, guys. I yeah. love me a Roger Taylor song. Well, we uh, I know you have it, Jerry. Fun in Space is Fun an in, outstanding Fun in space. album. Roger oh. Taylor soul album, 1980, I think, Frank. Somewhere around there. 19, oh, yeah. great album. Yep. Uh, but this is them getting their... Getting their Starting. Yeah, yeah pretty much. That this, this is the band that is becoming Queen as we knew them through all their heyday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is this is their third album, is that correct? Yes, album number yes. three. Okay. And, and like I said, for the, I, for the record, everybody, I'm not a Queen fan. Right. And, and what is your your beef with Queen? Uh, More Jim. Oh, never mind. Mostly pretentious and boring. Okay. I like them when they rock. Mm-hmm. The rest of the time, they put me to sleep. <laughs> uh, I, I should I should really like Brighton Rock, right? Right. Yes, you and should. Well, it starts out strong, and then it's like five freaking minutes, and it's a lot of noodling and just <laughs> five minutes, Frank. It's yes. not moving the song forward. Ah. Two minutes past his. Uh... What? They needed nice... to edit. It was 1974. I mean, it's a product of its time, right? right? So, yep. Yep. Um, but you can see the groundwork for what becomes you can Bohemian see it coming. Rhapsody. You can yes. see it's funny, Frank. Yes. I, I, I thought the same thing. You can see what's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. So there's oh. there's moments in the song that I think like, God, oh, this is really good. And the and the vocal parts back and forth between mm-hmm. Roger Taylor, Freddie yes. Mercury. Right. Great. Um And then Killer Queen funny, is Frank. an outstanding yeah. single. Um, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Unlike anything else on the record. Yes. It's a straight up yeah. pop song. That, that's the radio, yeah. 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 Uh, maybe my favorite song on the record. All right. Well, well, side two, we have In the Lap of the Gods, Stone Cold Crazy, another Roger Taylor song. Um, Dear Friends, Miss Fire, Bring Back That Leroy Brown, um, She Makes Me, and Lap of the Gods Revisited. All right. Let me yeah. clarify the reason I said Stone Cold Crazy is a Roger Taylor song, in my mind. The drumming on that song... It, Besides Brian May's awesome guitar playing, Brian May plays awesome. But Roger Taylor pounds those drums oh. it, just amazingly during that whole tune. And to keep that thing in, in, in time is just amazing yep. to me. Yep. So, um, now, the side two, it, it starts to pale for me because they, they just go all over the place. This is one of those, those al- album sides that... It's like they took all the spaghetti, threw it against the wall, and then they just want to see what would stick. You know, I think uh, that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and and wonderful coming from an Italian. Yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. See if it sticks, does yeah. it? I like it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well done, Frankie. I, I know. Well I know. Done. Jim probably doesn't like some of those songs because they're they're you know, bring back Leroy Brown. Come is on, is they're boring? I had Leroy Brown on a forty-five. By yeah. Jim Croce, though, folks. Oh, different, different Leroy Brown, yeah. Yep. No, I don't. I don't think they're boring. I think you have to be in the right frame of mind, and you have to, you know, number one, and want be into the band, of course. I just heard Jim exhale, Frank. I just heard Jim do this. <sighs> yeah. I, I don't know. get it, Jaime. I don't get it, Jaime. Is it is it like the four thousand overdubs per line that you don't like, or? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of everything. So, in the lap of the gods, the first one which the, the 
revisited or whatever has nothing to do with the first one. <laughs> it, it sounds to me like them just trying to figure out things they can dicky bird around with in the studio. I don't know. What was that? It, it got, kind of a bit of a pointless song to me. Stone Cold Crazy. Absolutely great. I love that. That is <laughs> absolutely rocking. great. Yep. Um, yeah, if you, time if to you, film, uh, you? So I was no, I was reading. I was listening to again today, and I was listening on. Uh, I listened to it on. Uh, I uh, not iTunes. I listened to it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going through and reading the comments. Right. There's not a single, not a single bad comment about this record anywhere. Just everybody hey, crazy it up and down. And, and yeah. people talk about Stone Cold Crazy as the the sort of template for what would become speed metal and thrash. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you think 1974, there wasn't a whole lot of that going on. That that was, I remember the there first time I heard that. that going on. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I'd never heard anything trying, so I'm trying hard. trying to think back, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it was. Pretty, that's pretty ravenous, yeah. I good. remember the first time hearing that song and just thinking like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, great tune. And, yeah, great tune. And they pulled that song off live too, which was amazing. Oh, it's for beautiful. That's that's pretty uh, to be able to sing that's that. That's heavy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the best comments I saw that um, he has no Metallica covered that song. Right. 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 1990 for that Ruby Yacht compilation record, and so somebody put like, "Wow, these guys really learned a lot from Metallica." I yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's like what? What? Paul McCartney was in a band before Wings. What? That's how what it is. That? With, that's how. It, that's how it is at our age, guys. You I hear stuff it. and you're like, "What?" Well, the I best mean, one was the, yeah. the one he did with Kanye, right? Oh yeah. People were like, "Oh, I don't know who this Paul McCartney guy is, man, but he's gonna blow up now. Yep. He's, gonna, he's got a future <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. He has yep, wings. He's gonna do great. Thanks, oh, Kanye. Yeah. This, this Paul guy. <laughs> So for, for Jim, the album does not hold up, obviously. It's not a classic in his mind. Uh, I liked it better than I thought I would. Mm. Um, but uh, Killer Queen, Tenement Funster, Now I'm Here. Now I'm Here. Don't Call Crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Misfire was Brian a song Mason? that kind of surprised me, the John Deacon tune. Oh, I John guess Deacon the first one he wrote yeah. kind of on his own. Uh, I liked that. So I could get it down to about five songs. If you took those five, put them on one side, you'd be good. a great EP. <laughs> what about you, Jerry? Do you have a favorite and a least favorite on this this uh, album? Uh, yeah, my least favorite, uh, and I'm, I'm a big Roger Taylor fan, but my mm -hmm. least favorite is Tenement Funster, only because he hasn't gotten there yet. He's close, I mean, yeah. he's close. I, I Like I said, Roger Taylor songs, and, and guys just between you and I and the flagpole, and, and you out in conspiracy land i didn't get on board with queen till the next album all right so to me i have all these little notes here like raw you can see it's coming right. you can tell they're getting they're getting it and uh yeah stone cold crazy is like i said might be fast metal i don't know but you know I what like I, to... go ahead no more Jaime. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i love is when uh so frank says like Oh, we're gonna do "Sheer Heart Attack" by Queen, and the first thing I'm thinking is, "Well, I love the title track." Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we're, yeah. we're all which isn't on age. this album. Not, no, it's a different right, album. Right. Yeah. Right. right. That's, that's the hilarious. next album. But that's and, another and that, song. That song rocks. Right. That's a good one. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, but it when does. they get that's, up in like uh, Radio Gaga little, or whatever they were doing, it's a little pray. I love uh, Radio Gaga. Have you listened to the lyrics on Radio Gaga? Oh, yeah, I do you know, this every time I hear it. Oh, that's uh, right, Freddie. You're or Roger wrote it. You're, that's right, Roger. There is I, no more radio, no more. I got oh, off damn, that that's train good, Roger. with the game. That was my final Queen album. That's my favorite. Yeah. I, well, actually, jazz before it. So I went yeah. uh, news of the world, jazz, the game. Okay. Then I got off, Frank. Yeah. Correct. I got off. I got off. Game was 1980, I think. Yeah. And when Roger Taylor, that song does more of that jazz. That song, mm -hmm. more of that jazz. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. You know, I I enjoy this whole I album. I think I did I, by I miracle. Well, well since, wait, since we're on Queen, let me ask let me ask you guys a question. Uh, under pressure. Uh huh. Like it? Don't like it? I love it. 
It's um, another John Deacon brilliant bass line that some people wrote a song around. Yeah, not not a huge it's fan. It's like it's like Dragon Attack. Yeah. I love I love Under Pressure. <laughs> I love it. I like the David Bowie I, sings I, on I, it. I think I had that on the 45. Yeah. Well, that's everywhere. what you like about it. David Bowie sang it. Well, I like that he appeared on it. I yeah. thought it was. I thought it was a good addition. I think he brings something to the song. I love it. I love yeah. that song. That's a good. Yeah. I mean, it's played out, but yeah. okay. And again, if MT had MTV hadn't have been there at that time, I don't think it would have been as big as it was. You I, know? I think I had that on the forty-five guys. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't have MTV in those days, so just. Yeah. Uh, Neither did I. I had to hear it. I, re I remember hearing it on right. the radio, and I was like, oh, right. Yeah. And oh, yeah. And then I, I was like, hey, before. that sounds like David Bowie singing. Yeah. Right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Uh, 45 said Queen and David Bowie. Ooh. Couldn't All tell right. you what the flip side was. <laughs> well, well, that'll do it for Queen's Sheer Heart Attack. Jerry, you've got the next pick. Where are we going? Uh, I struggle with this a lot, guys. And it was the same band, but different albums. And uh, I'm going with... Um, There's the Babies. Ooh. The Babies, Union Jacks. All right. Not Union Jack, plural, Union Jacks. Very good. Um, interesting I, I, fact, interesting fact about Union Jack. Go, Jaime. Union Jacks, <laughs> one of Brian May's all-time favorite albums. Very good, see? Really? There's nice no little tie connection. in there, Jerry. Yeah. Wow. Nice. No, guys, I struggled with that head first, and I did it today. I listened mm -hmm. to them each, and I go, you know, for me, and I believe it came out New Year's or junior year. Wow. Yeah. Uh, probably. So so for that, no, it did. Uh, I think it's, uh, of the two, I think it's the stronger album. Great, Jaime. Thank you. I, I did, guys. I went back and forth, back and forth. And I go, you know what? I had this. I played it a lot. I flipped the record over, played it again. So the babies, Union Jacks on Chrysalis Records, January 1980. All right. Well, Fantastic, next sir. Pick. Good pick. Awesome, honey. Look forward to that one. I am looking forward to that one. Awesome. Right. Hey, guys, Um, can I, for a moment tell you what i'm of up course to. you can and i don't even know what you're gonna say because you're my buddy frank from high school <laughs> right honey, what, right i don't care yeah. what he's gonna say i tell you yeah because you're not listening right now i want you to listen no oh, i listen <laughs> it's just always you yeah <laughs> um you ever heard of the the app fiverr f-i-v f-i-v-e-r-r -R. fiverr it, no it's a freelance application and what you do is uh, say a musician's writing a song and he needs a guitar solo, he needs a drum part or whatever, uh, you go on Fiverr and you shop around for musicians or, or whatever. So what I did is last week and a half ago or so, I wrote a real quick pop rock song. And I sang, I you know, I just did the whole thing myself. And then I sent it out to four different singers on Fiverr. Ah. And I got three versions back. One, one of them didn't make it in time, so they refunded me the money. Um, I just want to share that uh, yes. I'll be putting a link up because I got a video that I did today of the three guys singing portions of the songs plus me. So that way you guys can check it out and see which version you like the best. And I just might release whoever likes the, whatever singer the best as a single. Very Jim. cool. Jim, we we better like Frank's version. No, no, and I, that's not not the case. But let me play if I can a little bit. It's of the always tune. the case. <laughs> Just a second. Here. <laughs> Okay, I'll leave it at that. Now, Frank, can I ask you something? Yes. Is the only thing is the only thing they're contributing is vocal. You're no. the whole music. 
yes. drums, bass, everything. So everything it's else, just vocal. Right. So Did you, you send it out like that, like with your vocal on it as a guy? No. Well, I sent it out with you, my you vocal, and I sent it out without any vocals at all other than background vocals. So Do they, that first one they again. Get a, they get oh, a no, no. feel for what the melodies sound like. Right. And I gave them freedom to change up anything they wanted to change if they felt like – and the one, one guy that – I uh, I like the best. He changed. He could hold a note, and he could actually sing really good. Play Mozart again. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to watch the video. That's all I can tell you is. Rock me, Amadeus. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I got a, oh, I got a Fred oh, Schneider um, vibe from that guy. You know, when, when you listen to it. Uh, Which one? One, two, first guy. I, I didn't get Fred the Schneider. But, uh, Neither did I. <laughs> I got like a Sebastian Bachy kind of. Oh no, that was the first one. I'm talking about, I'm talking second, about the second, second, second guy. Second guy was Fred Snyder. Yeah. Yeah. If you see a painted sign <laughs> at the side of the road. Well, the first time, the first vocals he gave me, you know, he, I thought he was Russian because he says, "I cannot believe what doctor say." You know, I said, "What are you doing?" So <laughs> I said, "Go back and listen." <laughs> but then I realized he's kind of he's a he's a comedian. Because on oh. his profile, he's dressed up like Beetlejuice. So it's like, all right, this guy's, he's having fun. He's just goofy. Yeah, so. that's the way it should be. Yeah. But anyways, I'm going to post a video of, my, I'm going to play a little bit of my song and then of each one and show their bios on, on Fiverr. And I want the people that watch the video to, to vote on uh, which one they like the best. So I'll be putting hmm. the, uh, the link in there soon so you guys check that cool. out yeah i like that first one you know what i love about the show folks i didn't laugh so hard i didn't <laughs> sing so much and we got way more of jim yes <laughs> if there was just a way to make his picture bigger you know well what i like about jim these days i think that old bicycle injury are we still live frank yes we're live oh, okay it's all right you can edit out anything right no i think it's the old bicycle injury where our last couple of shows I mean, it's just like he's way back. Uh, laid back. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> where's my fridge? Is that it? Uh, no, <laughs> that's all good. All right, then. Uh, you got anything else, Jerry? Before we uh, sign uh, yeah, off? folks on Conspiracy Land, uh, keep rocking. Check out the Pearl Hearts, Tight Whips, Kirk Adams. Uh, you know, on all the uh, social media, Facebook, YouTube, Bandcamp. Um, Keep rocking, folks. Just keep rocking. We're still in month whatever of COVID, but sure. keep rocking. Just listen to music. It's it's great. Keep rocking. There you go. And I, I and I love Jim and Frank. Yep. <laughs> well, I don't have a whole lot. Like I said, I uh, shared what I had to share. Uh, check out um, all the bands we presented, and um, support your yep. uh, support these guys. Support Bandcamp. Yeah. Reverb Nation, iTunes, whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Spotify, uh, I yeah. guess Bandcamp Facebook still is doing the yep. uh, Bandcamp's the shizzle third Friday of the month or something I like didn't that. Cuss. No, you didn't. I think it's the third Friday of the month or something like that. That all the proceeds go to the Free. artist. Yeah, so. goes to yeah. the artist. Cool. I, try to buy, I try to buy on those days when I remember. Yeah, me Same too. Same here. Yeah. All right, well, next episode, which will be episode 47, our uh, album will be The Babies with Union Jacks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Great pick, Jerry. It is thank you, guys. Pick. Yeah, yep. thank you. I, I struggled, but that's yeah. the one that meant the most to me at that time. All right. And uh, I played it a lot, yeah. Good deal. Yeah. All right, then, Jim, do you have anything else? Well... The usual, man. Subscribe, smash the like button, ring that notification bell. Yep. Leave some comments. How can you not love us? <laughs> and our cringy knowledge. And our cringy knowledge. Of Kiss. <laughs> and, and, and more Jim. More Jim. We need more Jim. Speak up, Frank. And Jerry, don't laugh. That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, it got to him. It got there it to is. Him. I, I tried, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all good. I, yeah, you made I it. I tried. You yeah, did. I good. tried. All right, Jim, take us home. Shop is closed. <laughs>
you know. But like I said, I I took a picture of that hate mail, and I almost think <laughs> I almost think Frank wrote that under a pen name. Yeah, of course. But I'm not. But I'm not going to say it because I realize it's Frank. He would just say it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, it was and, funny. And, and, and you noticed I just muffled my laugh. Yeah. I didn't do my full blast.